Hi, it's Dwyer, May 17th, 2023. Let's talk about the big fight at lightweight. Champion Devin Haney against Vasily Lomachenko. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I view this fight as mispriced. Right, mispriced. I thought the line would adjust, it hasn't. The world seems to believe that you should be getting better than a plus 200 on Lomachenko. Right, maybe people are listening too much to Eddie Hearn. I'm a fan of Eddie Hearn, don't mean to diss him. But Eddie Hearn feels that this is a relatively easy, straightforward fight for Devin Haney. What I want people to do is to consider the following. Devin Haney's last six fights, right, against people like George Cambosis, Jorge Linares, Yorkis Gamboa, right, Jojo Diaz. The Diaz fight is significant because Diaz is a southpaw like Lomachenko. Were all of those fights straightforward? Ask yourself that question. Was it clear that Devin Haney was going to win all of those fights? Well, let me just say that if you answered yes, that all of those fights, it was obvious that Devin Haney was a superior fighter. Tell us why in the comment section of this video, all of Devin Haney's last six fights went the distance. Right? Explain it to us. If Devin Haney is that dominant a fighter, right? if he is so overwhelmingly the favorite, if he's one of the big fish in the sport of boxing, why is it that all of his last six opponents, excuse me, because he fought one twice, why is it that his last five opponents, righty or lefty, Jojo Diaz is a lefty, found a way to go the distance. Folks, let's just be blunt. I don't believe Devin Haney wins two out of three against Lomachenko. Hell, I don't believe Teofimo Lopez, who beat Lomachenko, wins two out of three against Lomachenko. I believe the betting side of this play screams in your face. If Devin Haney is not a knockout puncher, certainly has not been of late. If he's the kind of guy who gets the upper hand in a fight and then says, okay, I'm going to win this by decision, and it's only the third round of the fight. But if he's not a guy who overwhelms and outclasses even an overwhelmed and outclassed opponent, then he's going to have a problem here. Who would you pick in boxing to outbox Lomachenko over 12 rounds if you knew the fight was going 12 rounds? Are there any guarantees? I personally feel, based on styles, that Shakur Stevenson beats Lomachenko. But even there, I don't think it's two out of three times. Right? And even there, it's a bit iffy. You could see a scenario where Loma comes in, gets a knockdown, right? Didn't Loma stop Jorge Linares, right? Who, by the way, went the distance with Devin Haney, right? You could see a scenario where Stevenson gets caught with some big shot. The fans get on Loma's side. After all, he's the old lion. Right? He's the person who we look at, we remember his Olympic gold medals, plural. Right, It's easy to root for the old underdog when he's fighting some young guy who the world has fallen in love with. So here we have Devin Haney, and folks, I just have a problem with the idea that Devin Haney is so superior to Loma that I can know with certainty that Devin Haney is going to outbox him in a fight that goes the distance. Right? So forgive me. 
I don't see it that way. The hedge here is the over. I don't care if it's 11 and a half rounds because, folks, Devin Haney is not a closer. Now, this is not to say that Devin Haney isn't a champ. He is a champ. Right? I look at Devin Haney. I have a lot of respect for Devin Haney. Devin Haney is the guy who travels to foreign countries for title fights. But let's stop kidding ourselves here. He's going to have to outbox Loma. Outbox him. So the casino is going to tell me that one of the master boxers in the sport is going to be outboxed and that the odds should be lopsided. Folks, a plus 200 are wide odds. Right? You don't get that that often in team sports unless you're picking the Oakland A's in baseball. Right? It's rare. In a competitive match, and I view this match as highly competitive. Highly competitive. In a competitive match, neither side should be close to a plus 200. Understand, if your guy's getting a plus 150, the market's only giving him a 40% chance of winning the fight. Here, they're not even giving Loma a 35% chance of winning the fight. Right now, Loma is not fighting Aaron Pryor. Let's be real here. Right? There isn't that threat of imminent danger of, you know, Devin Haney coming across the ring and just making it impossible for Loma to avoid him. That's not this fight. It's going to be comfortable in my eyes for Loma. In other words, Loma could slip up, say to himself, oh man, I forgot about his right hand. Get hit with it and continue on in the fight. Right? And so I'm sorry. I don't see the Alexis Arguello in this fight. I don't see the Aaron Pryor in this fight. What I see are two boxers. Right? Two boxers. And I just don't think that Devin Haney is twice as good as Lomachenko. Loma is even known for his stamina. I keep hearing people saying, what about Loma's age? Right, folks, this is one of the best athletes in the sport. Right, this is a guy with hand speed and stamina. Right, this isn't going to be the fight where you get to the ninth round, suddenly Loma's breathing out of his mouth. Tell me, Loma against Orlando Salido, fight he lost. Didn't that go the distance? How about Loma against Teofimo Lopez? Bigger puncher than Devin Haney. Let's be clear here. Right, Teofimo can have his problems. Don't sleep on his power. He's a bigger puncher than Devin Haney. And didn't Loma, in a fight he lost, not only go the distance against Teofimo Lopez, wasn't he the more active fighter in the last two rounds of that fight? And folks, that fight was a relatively close fight, right? And of course, after that fight, Loma ends up having shoulder surgery. Now here we have a Loma who's healthy against a guy who doesn't have Teofimo Lopez's punch. In the comment section of this video, tell me what I'm missing. Tell me why Devin Haney is supposed to win two out of three against Lomachenko. I thought boxing with Loma was one of the tough things about boxing. Right? I thought most fighters, if they went into a fight and you thought, gee, this guy's going to have to outbox Lomachenko to win the fight, I thought gamblers would say, wow, that, that's a tall order even if I think the fight's competitive. If you're going to give me two, better than two to one on Loma, that's where I'm going to be. Now let's talk about styles. 
isn't one of the secrets to Devin Haney the fact that Devin Haney likes to keep you outside? Is that a secret? Isn't it obvious? When you're watching a Devin Haney fight, you know he's not going to crash the pocket, don't you? You know this isn't the fight where Devin Haney wants to lower his head, come inside, and stay inside, rip body shots, and go for a knockout. Folks, that hasn't happened for his last five opponents. Right? Why am I to believe that because Loma is physically smaller than Devin Haney, that Devin Haney is going to be able to walk down Loma. As I said here, he doesn't have the power of Teofimo Lopez. He just doesn't. Right? Where the George Cambosis fights, where, by the way, Cambosis goes the distance twice. In other words, it's not like we get to the second fight which was lopsided in Devin Haney's favor. But it's not like we get to the second fight and we think, okay, now Haney has seen him for 12 rounds. Let me look at my watch because Cambosis is on the clock here. Right? No, no, no. Even with familiarity, Devin Haney didn't take chances, didn't stop George Cambosis. This is a cautious fighter. Well, let me tell you who's not cautious. You remember Nicholas Walters, knockout puncher, right? Heavy puncher, unbeaten at the time. He's fighting Loma, and Loma is diving in the pocket. Look at that film. Loma is diving in the pocket the way a Devin Haney doesn't. He's taking chances. He's in with a puncher. He's bouncing around the pocket, but folks, he's daring Nicholas Walters to trade with him. Walters says no mas, basically, right? Loses his unbeaten status. Loses the fight to Devin Haney. Right now, Devin Haney, excuse me, loses the fight to Loma. Right now, understand, Loma has some of the best legs in the sport. If I asked most boxing fans to name me the guys who move around the ring, the best in the sport, Loma is going to be on that short list. Now, Devin Haney is too. Haney has great legs. But are you certain that he'll be able to keep Southpaw? In fact, he's ambidextrous. But natural Southpaw Loma outside? I'm not. Don't you think an opponent of Devin Haney's knows now that if he stays outside, he gets outboxed? Don't you think Loma is going to crash the pocket and get inside on Devin Haney? I keep saying this in every video. Will Chamberlain, right, arguably basketball's GOAT, right, led the league in assists one year from the center position. Chamberlain used to lament that no one roots for Goliath. Right now, you're telling me that a tall fighter, the overwhelming favorite, the better than two to one favorite in this fight, Devin Haney, is going to be the fan favorite if smaller Lomachenko gets inside and looks like Ray Leonard. Granted, Ray was a knockout puncher, but looks like Ray Leonard did against Thomas the Hitman Herms. Folks, it's a bad visual. When the smaller man is all up in your grill, is letting both hands go, is showing the judges, is showing the public that you can't keep him outside, doesn't have the 
shoulder in need of surgical repair that he did for the Teofimo Lopez fight, in which he went the distance, right, starts to flash hand speed. The crowd knows that he's the underdog, right? I'm just telling you, Devin Haney is going to need Tony Weeks as referee to escape that situation in this fight if this fight's on the way to the distance. Right? I'm just telling you, Jorge Linares badly hurt. Badly hurt Devin Haney. The very next round, Jorge is there trying to taunt Devin Haney, wants to trade with Devin Haney. Devin Haney stayed outside. Devin Haney wanted to win. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. But you're not dealing with that fighter here who says, hey, you know, I hit harder than this other guy. If this other guy enters the pocket, he's going to pay a high price. That's not Devin Haney. So I believe Loma has looked at the films. I believe Loma knows what we all know. If I stay outside, I lose this fight. I think Lomachenko is going to try to come inside. I think what Loma is going to find is that he is as fast as Devin Haney in terms of hand speed. That his legs are as good as Devin Haney's. That Devin Haney is an orthodox fighter who's only fought one southpaw in his last six fights, Jojo Diaz, And Jojo Diaz went the distance with him. And that Devin Haney has not in his career faced a southpaw with this level of agility and mobility as Lomachenko has. Right? So, for me, this is an easy bet. I'm not saying I win it. I'm not saying I win it. But the odds always matter. And when I hear that a guy without power, without big power, right, no one's going to confuse Devin Haney's power with Tank's power, Gravante Davis's power. Right, when I see a guy without big power and I hear that he's fighting an Ali type, Right, a guy who usually boxes the socks off his opponent. And that's who Lome is. Right? A guy who in some fights, I believe it's the Richard Kami fight, double check me on it, is beating up the guy to such a degree that he stops fighting and turns to the referee to let the ref know, are you gonna stop this fight or not? When I hear that and Ali or Aloma is getting a plus 200 against a guy who can't punch. In other words, Devin Haney is not foreman. Right? My attitude is, okay, well, I'm going to be on that side of the play. <laughs> not only that, I get the visual. Taller guy, shorter guy. Right? Um I'm going to be on that side of the play, and then I'm going to take the easy easy hedge that this fight goes over. Right? You and I know if Devin Haney comes out, and if he's right, and I have no doubt that Devin Haney thinks that there's a sequence of events that would give him the upper hand in the fight. Right? He's wanted to fight Loma for a long time. Be careful what you wish for. So no doubt he's seen Loma, and he's thinking to himself, I can beat this guy. Right? If Loma does this or that, I have an answer for it. If Devin Haney is right, you and I know that even if he dominates the first three or four rounds of the fight, he's going to take his foot off the gas. Right? He's going to be like Anthony Joshua was against Jermaine Franklin. If he thinks he's winning, he's going to coast for the rest of the fight. Get the decision. You hit on the uh, over. If he's wrong, if he's wrong, 
If he comes out and suddenly Loma's faster than he thought. Loma's more fluid than he thought. Loma has taken Haney's right hand right off his shoulder. It's a non-factor. Haney's size actually works against him because Loma's getting inside on Haney. Haney doesn't have the agility. Those long arms are neutralized because Loma can crash the pocket. Right? Look at the Nicholas Walters film again. Right? If Haney's wrong, what side of the bet would you want to be on? Wouldn't you want to be on Loma at better than plus 200? So, yeah, I make no apology for this play. I know there are a lot of young guys out there. You know the way young guys are. They always pick on some older guy, and they always want you to believe that that older guy is washed up. You know, it's their time. They're ready. So, of course, it's become fashionable of late, even though Loma's only lost to one guy of late. Teofimo Lopez. Right? The Orlando Salido fight was years ago, folks. Loma's lost to one guy of late, right? And, of course, the guy's promoter is going to, or former promoter, is going to back him and say, yeah, this is a straightforward fight for uh, Devin Haney, right? Everyone understands Haney's younger than Loma, probably has more big paydays ahead of him long term than a guy in his mid-30s, right? We understand the politics of boxing, but I need for you to stare at this line and just ask yourself, is there any fighter in the world that I would expect to outbox Loma two times out of every three matches? Then the next question is, is that person Devin Haney? Right? Understand, I mentioned Shakur Stevenson's name earlier. Stevenson's a southpaw, just like Loma. I want people to look at Stevenson's last fight against Yoshino. There's a knockdown in that fight where Yoshino, who has a punch, gets inside on Shakur Stevenson. And Stevenson throws a very short, it's very short, straight left that drops Yoshino. Right, If Loma gets inside on Devin Haney, just understand that Devin Haney does not have that short left hand. Haney's orthodox. Right, Haney has a left hook. Haney has a long right hand. If Loma comes inside, doesn't give Haney an opportunity to extend his arms. All Loma has to do is block the short left hook and he'll be inside in a better position to inflict damage than Devin Haney, right? Don't you think Loma moves too well on the outside to be kept outside by Haney's jab? I do. If you're expecting the George Cambosis fight, in what universe does Cambosis move as well and have the hand speed of Lomachenko? So I'll be the casino's huckleberry here. I'll take the underdog, right? You're telling me I'm taking a better than two to one underdog? Okay, great. If that underdog's Lomachenko, sign me up against Devin Haney. Sign me up, right? I'll take that bet and I'll hedge it with the over. Right, let's be clear here. Loma has a margin of error. Right? I know we got dropped by Linares and had to get off the canvas. Right? Linares, by the way, is a bigger puncher than Devin Haney, in my eyes. Right? Lomachenko is not fighting Gervonta Davis here. He's not gonna get hit with the withering body shot that ended Ryan Garcia. He's not going to get hit with the right hand up top that ended Raleigh Romero. Right? He understands that he can take Devin Haney's punch just like the opponents did in the last six Devin Haney fights, all of which went the distance. I'm just telling you, Loma is a dangerous man as it is. Against a 
guy without the big punch who needs to outbox him to win the fight. He's even more dangerous. If the casino, and they're just market makers, we understand when we say the casino, we're really talking about the guys on the other part of the play. If the guys on the other part of the play have forgotten about great fighters in their mid-30s, right, are caught up in the here and now and are saying it's our time, it's our generation and stuff like that, great, great. I haven't seen the Loma fight where Loma is spent lack stamina, is struggling at the end of the match, right? Even Haney's strong suit, his stamina, might hurt him here. I like Loma. I'll take the odds. Better than plus 200. Sounds good to me. I'll hedge the play with the over. That's my updated take on this fight for March 17th, 2023. Let me hear what you think. Haney's unbeaten, it's possible that we overvalue unbeaten fighters. Right? You've heard me mention some names here. Shakur Stevenson, Gervonta Davis, right? Uh, let me throw out some others. Frank Martin, right? Haney hasn't fought them. Unbeaten is only as good as the level of the competition you faced. Was Yorkeese Gamboa in his prime when he fought Devin Haney? Was Jorge Linares in his prime when he fought Devin Haney? Wasn't George Cambosis the underdog when he fought Teofimo Lopez? Another guy, by the way, that Haney hasn't fought. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you when the crowd is telling you that a fighter is washed up and, you know, you're thinking to yourself, really? Did they watch the commie fight? <laughs> I mean, you know, you're thinking, really? Uh, a guy without a big punch is a big favorite against my Ali type fighter? I view that as an opportunity. The betting side of the play here, to me, is obvious, right? I'll hedge it with the over. I'll live for another day if the over hits. But I need for gamblers to understand the risk involved in what I'm saying. If Haney's able to close the show before the over hits, in other words, if Haney closes the show, stops the first man he stopped, in his last six fights, you lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.